My name is Nathan Carey Merrick, and uh, I am uh, a member of the Omaha Tribe of Nebraska, and I li live in uh, Rosalie, Nebraska, which is not very far from here. Uh, I was born on April 29, 1948. Uh, my parents were Fred Merrick and Abby LaFleche Merrick, and I come from a family of 11 children, uh, two girls and, and uh, three uh, three girls and, and uh, eight boys, and a very large family. But in uh, 1954, my older brothers, uh, my older brothers, uh, Mark Merrick uh, and Fred Merrick, and my sister Mary, um, I might take that back, my, my brother Charlie, were already here boarding at, a, at the boarding school. And I had, uh, at five or six years old, I had no knowledge of what was what what uh, what was going on? I had never been away from my mother, and never been away from my father, and, and uh, it was just a shock to me. But uh, I can I can vaguely remember coming here to St. Augustine's at that age, and uh, you know uh, at that age uh, and time, the the, the times and, and age are different. When I came here, I had never I had never seen a white person before, and. Uh, and, I, and all kinds of things that were shocking to me suddenly happened. But it was all for the good because uh, at, that, at that time and back in those days and, and now, that I, now that I understand more, my parents uh, having a, such a large family of children were having difficulty in, in providing for us and taking care of us and making sure that we got a good education. But uh, they, they had to make a sacrifice too. My mother, I'm sure it was a big sacrifice to bring her children here and uh, leave us in the care of, uh, of the sisters, the nuns here. And I, I, I can remember the nuns uh, taking, taking us by the hand and taking care of us, being, uh, being the youngest ones to arrive here. And fortunately, I had the older brothers and a sister and cousins and relatives that I, some I had never met before. We're already here at St. Augustine's, and so it was. It was a good experience, and then also uh, we we together. You know, uh, we we lived together in dormitories, uh, and uh, it, it was it was the time of learning, and at that time, you know, it was uh, very well. I, I I could say these sisters were amazing. The nuns here at St. Augustine's, now that I think about it, now that I realize what tremendous obligation and what, what uh, dedication they had to their, to their, uh, to, to their uh, service to St. Augustine's. I, I don't remember exactly how many nuns there were, maybe six or seven. And there was other uh, uh, lay teachers, you know, here that worked at St. Augustine's to teach. But they had a tremendous job, you know, and I'm always thankful to them. I, I you know, I've, uh, I think just one of them is still surviving today over, over here. And every time I see her, it brings back good memories of, of, of the nuns because they became our, our, our mother. And they treated the kids uh, just like uh, any mother would, you know, they watched over them. And of course, if you have, 30 children under your care at any one time. I mean, that's a big responsibility and, and it takes a lot of effort and uh, patience and, and uh, to, to that, for that many kids. And I'm always amazed that uh, they, they would be able to do such a good job. But they were the primary caretakers of us and they, those nuns uh, taught us so many things. You know, they, you know, when I went to bed at night, I, I recall the nuns walking around uh, to the dormitory and putting everybody to sleep and, and making their prayers for the night, just walking around. And I'd wake up and the nuns were the same nun would be waking me up, you know, in the morning. I, I, I never thought, I never got, gave it a thought that they had to sleep sometime, you know. But they did and uh, took excellent care of us. And also I have to really say a lot for uh, Father uh, Monsignor Frank Halsman. He was the uh, director or the head of St. Augustine's at that time. And I, now that I think about him, I have real fond memories of him because he was, uh, 
he was such a, a good man. He, uh, he would, I know he worked many hours every day. I don't recall call, uh, ever, ever going to his office, but I know he, he did a lot of work, you know, uh, trying to find beneficiaries to support the church, support the church and the school. But he would always make time to come and play softball with us, and he would, he would come time to be around the kids in the evenings, and whenever we were having activities, he made sure that we, uh, we, uh, we were all uh, well-dressed, well taken care of, well groomed. He was that kind of a person. And I have to say that Father uh, Monsignor Frank at that time, I think he was a father at that time, became a Monsignor later. But he, uh, he was really interested in our kids and he, he made sure that we had uh, a good uh, a variety of uh, things happening in our lives here. I was an altar boy. I served, uh, I served Mass for Father Frank many, many, many times when I was a little boy. Me and my brother, Charlie, we traveled with him. We, uh, we went to Omaha, and, uh, and, and I'd never seen so many uh, people in my life at that time. I was probably a couple of hundred people in a, in a church, a big church in Omaha. I was just a little boy, kind of scared, but we served Mass for Father, and uh, he took us there and treated us very well. Um, father was father was very was very was so very interested in the children that in a in a in a winter time you know uh, Christmas and uh, it took effort I believe that he made sure that every child got a big bag of uh, toys and candy at Christmas time mm -hmm. you know that we could we could take home uh, we always went home on on Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter. And we and we would go home for the summer, from May until until September. But uh, Father was so thoughtful about those kinds of things, and he also uh, was uh, a big uh, he was a big uh, uh, supporter of uh, sports. We uh, when I was a little boy, we had a, a football team. You know, it was an elementary school, but we we had a football team and we competed in the league in Sioux City. Me and my brothers, uh, I don't remember if we were a winning season or losing season or not, but we were just having fun, you know. Mm -hmm. But we played football, and we ha you also had a, a basketball team. And so as kids, uh, we had a basketball team, and we had the girls were cheerleaders, and, and it, was, it, was, it was a good life, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Father was so, so supportive of that. Now, it, now that I'm older, not, I, I recognize and I think back about it, all of this took a lot of dedication to his, his, his dedication was to, to, to provide for these children and provide an education. And he, he, he worked at it every day. Mm. And uh, I, I was real fortunate because uh, when I came here I had, uh, it was my learning experience, but there was other Indian kids from all over the country here. Some from South Dakota, different tribes, the Sioux and the, and the some kids that came from Kansas, Potawatomi's, Kickapoo's, mm -hmm. and of course the Ho Chunks here, and the Omaha's, and uh, I, we were pretty well sheltered, sheltered by the St. Augustine's, the church, and we were we were pretty much uh, protected, and and not realizing that outside of the realm of St. Augustine's there was another world, and we would uh, we would enter that world when we left, left St. Augustine's. And a lot of us, a uh, lot of us, I'm going to say, uh, ended up with a lot of problems. But my fondest memories are, are of St. Augustine's, the mission here, and the, 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 the nuns especially. And the, and the different priests that came, I think I think I seen three or four priests come through here, that, you know, that, that helped Father Monsignor Frank. And uh, Father... Uh, Father Frank, he he uh, he was so he was so dedicated to the mission, to 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 providing the education, and he never talked to us about the world outside of Saint Augustine's. You know, I but but we learned, mm -hmm. and all of us that left, you know, throughout the years, you know, my my life, I have run, I have met many former students of Saint Augustine's. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them had difficulties with their life, and, I, and that's 
that that's has to happen, I guess. And a lot of uh, our our uh, those that I I recall went on to become leaders of their tribe. You know, tribal councilmen. They became uh, teachers and educators. One of my uh, close relatives, Bobby Penn, became a famous, world famous artist, and he taught at the at the University of uh, Vermilion, South Dakota, at Vermilion, South Dakota. And uh, so, so th there was a lot of, of kids that went on to do other good things with their life, you know. And I myself, you know, I, I. Uh, I went on to go to school at Flandreau, South Dakota, and, and later I, I went to work in construction. And by the time I was 21 years old, I was a policeman. And I worked for our, our tribe at Macy, Nebraska, as an Omaha tribal policeman. And then I left Macy and I went to work for the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the U.S. government. And I went up into South Dakota and I worked at Pine Ridge, South Dakota for six years. And I became a, a captain of police and a criminal investigator of the BIA. And I stayed with them for about 20 years. I, wor I traveled around the country. I worked in, uh, in uh, South Dakota, in Wyoming, in Utah, in Oklahoma, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, I, uh, I, I, I believe that uh, the teachings that I got here at St. Augustine's from the nuns and through the, through the, through the church were a big part of a character that went on to help me uh, to to uh, to be a to follow my pr pr profession as a policeman in trying to be fair and honest and those those things that were instilled in me uh, through the church you know were helpful in my life and they still are today today I'm uh, 69 years old and I've uh, got many many children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren. And uh, the, the religion and the church, the Catholic Church, has been really good to me. And uh, St. Augustine's, as uh, I support it here as much as I can, and uh, come to church as much as I can. I go to Our Lady of Fatima Church in Macy, which is a really a big, huge uh, asset to our community in Macy, a place where our people can uh, go and gather and, and uh, make prayers. And, uh, and I'm, really, uh, I'm really glad that uh, uh, St. Augustine continues to thrive the way it does. And, and to all the, you know, the, uh, the benefactors, those who, who uh, put anything into this school, you know, they, there's many rewards. But they might, they might not see themselves, but in the children that benefit from it, they go on and become Good, good citizens, good people, and so I'm 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 thankful to be here today to, to uh, talk to you about this, and let you know, and uh, also I, I might mention you know I, I have a, my wife uh, Beverly, she comes from a family of eight girls and she's also an Omaha Indian, tribal member. She also attended St. Augustine's here, <clears throat> and I think she was here. She's uh, six or eight years younger than me. And she was here the same time I was, but we didn't know each other or know anything. We were children. And uh, later on in life, you know, we, we come together and now we, uh, we have a home and we, we share together and we, we continue to, to, to pray together and, and uh, to, to, to try and, uh, and, and help our people as much as we can in our own way. So I, I so wanted to thank you for this opportunity to come here today and, and uh, say something nice about St. Augustine's. I was here from about 1953 to about 1960, yeah. somewhere around in yeah. there. Yeah, so. I mean, is it just, is that just your, your outlook on, on life, or? Well, uh, as children, you know, I, I, I can recall, uh, uh, as children, as all children in any nationality, you know, there's gonna be conflicts. Children sometimes all, don't always get along. You know, we don't sure. we don't see eye to eye, yeah. and uh, but there was so much activity here, so many things that was going on. Basketball, uh, mm. we had a boxing team, mm. you know, and uh, that's one of the, the one of the the things fondest memories I have here. We had a, a boxing coach by the name of uh, Tommy Tommy Harden, and uh, Russell Saints here, 
Conrad de Cora. They were adults here from the community of, uh, of uh, Winnebago. And uh, they, they came up here and we, we had a boxing team for our young men. We competed in boxing at uh, Sioux City at the uh, Red Shield Boys Club. Every year there was a boxing tournament there and we went up there and we, we, uh, we did that. And I think that was healthy. Healthy, uh, good, taught us good sportsmanship, taught us respect, and, and uh, it, it's a give and take world. And we found that. And as children, me and my brothers, and uh, we all kept together. And I think one of the things, the main things that I can recall is that we weren't separated and put out into foster homes in different places. Mm -hmm. We were all brought here to St. Augustine's and we continue to maintain our family relationship. Mm -hmm. And it continues to this day. My best friend is my brother, you know. <laughs> How many people can say that, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, it, to me, that's, he's always been my, been right, my right hand man or my left hand man. He's always been there for me. Mm -hmm. And my other brother is the same way. And I think that those kind of things that were instilled in us we overcame the difficult parts of our of our lives, and here at St. Augustine's, you know, I the, the nuns had a really difficult job, and uh, a, a lot of uh, some people say, you know, the, the nuns were, were were mean or they were difficult to, but to me, I didn't see it that way. And now that I look back at it, and I realize that uh, they they were mothers, and they had to. Discipline their children. If I had been home, I probably would have got a lot more discipline than I got here, you know. But as I looked and saw that, uh, it kind of kept us all in line and kept everybody together, and uh, we all helped each other. And we, and that was one of the big things that I learned was helping, helping each other. And the other kids that, that I grew up with, you know, we could help each other, whether it was in homework or whether it was uh, uh, socializing together outside of the school. And uh, whatever, we, whatever we did, we did it together, you know, and, and, I, and as, as I grew old to be an adult, that became really handy in my life, you know, to continue to work that way. So, so it's difficult times, yes, but it, all in all, you know, it was healthy, you know, I, I, I believe. Very good. That's my experience. Yes, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. It's, it's, it's something that was missing in my life, uh, the, the, the cultural part of uh, growing up. Because uh, at leaving home at five years old, you know, I, my, although my mother and my father spoke fluently the Omaha language, almost 100% of the time they were talking to each other in our Omaha language. And I could pick up and understand basically what they're talking about, especially when they're talking about me. But uh, I didn't really get to learn the language uh, as fluently as I probably should have. And I think that coming here to St. Augustine's probably stopped that from happening. But I don't see that as uh, being harmful to me in any way. I believe that uh, uh, learning, coming here to school and learning to get an education. And uh, years later, I asked my mother about this, why, uh, why we didn't learn to speak our language. And no, I don't recall anybody ever telling me I couldn't speak my language because nobody ever that I remember it was a few that could speak the language, but I, I don't remember. But my mother told me, she said, basically, I wanted you to get an education. I wanted you to go to school so that you could take care of yourself when you became an adult. And she said, I also wanted you to have an education in, in religion. I wanted you to know about God. And uh, I take that very seriously because still today, you know, we, uh, we have a, everybody has to have spiritual strength and uh, we have to help each other get that spiritual strength. Sometimes when we, when we get weak and things are difficult and times are difficult, when our children are sick, when our people are in mourning, or when, uh, when things are difficult, we have to reach into our spiritual being and bring out the thoughts about God's. And uh, so that, that, that's what I find. And uh, later on, after I left uh, St. Augustine's and became a teenager, I found, you know, the, the, the things that we were protected from or sheltered from, drugs and alcohol was easily available. And I myself fell victim to that. But uh, I was able to overcome that and uh, go on and have a prosperous life of some sort. 
And uh, now today, uh, I, I uh, went back to my tribe and I found those cultural things that, that were missing. But it wasn't just me. It's a lot of our generation, my generation, have, have uh, and, and now there's people that are in our tribe that are work educators who are trying to teach our language, bring back these cultural things. The Native American church is active in our community. Um, and, I, and I might add, uh, St. Augustine's, uh, the, 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 the Catholic Church here supports that and helps them with their, whenever they want to make prayers. They make the church available to them with ceremonies, and which is very important to us. So I'm, I'm real thankful for those kinds of things. And I, I, uh, I just believe that uh, no, matter, no matter how we pray, whether it's in a Native American church teepee or whether it's in a sweat lodge, or whether, or whether we're in, wherever we might be, in a Catholic church, when long as we talk to God, God hears our prayers. And God understands all languages. I don't believe that God, there's a language that God doesn't understand. And so, whether I can speak my language or not, God hears my prayers. So I'm, I'm thankful for those kind of things. The future uh, for for uh, the tribes, I, I, I believe is in education, and uh, everybody knows that. And the more educated we get, the, the stronger we become. And if we uh, if we pray together, we're going to we're going to always be able to help each other. And uh, we uh, we the the Ho, the Ho chunks and the Omahas have always had a, a mutual relationship and respect for one another. And at times we come together to make prayers together some and uh, we also we also socialize together through our uh, native american cultural uh celebrations in the summertime uh we uh we have our what, what the white man would call a powwow but we we call it something else you know but we have big celebrations together and those kind of things uh are, are really good for us and i'm sure that happens all over the country I would just like to add, you know, that uh, the future of uh, St. Augustine's is in the hands of uh, Father Mark and the priests and the nuns who work here. And uh, when, I, when, I, uh, when I look at our tribes, both tribes, today I'm a public defender. I work in our tribal court system and I try to help our people that need help in the, who, who, are, who are in trouble with the courts. And I see voids that are left open that can help our, our people. St. Augustine's is, is one of them, uh, where uh, it used to be a boarding school. And uh, since we don't have the boarding school anymore, there's, there's a still a big need for uh, a lot of our kids to have that structured environment to go to every day. And, and it's no fault of the children well, the parents, sometimes it's the fault of alcohol and drugs and uh, children are not getting the education that they should. And uh, if, I, I believe that if there is a boarding school, somehow, some way, well, I, I wouldn't want to say that uh, there, there still exists boarding schools, but uh, if we had community boarding schools that were designed to help those who are really, really in need. It would be helpful to our people. And I guess I'm talking about the impossible maybe, but uh, that, that's a real need for our people. And I, I'm sure it's in both tribes. Mm -hmm. okay. One of the things that uh, I think is, is important for, that a lot of people don't know about uh, the Native Americans is that uh, we, uh, we still try to hang on to the, 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 the cultural values that, that were given to our parents and grandparents. And part of that is that uh, when our children are, are, are born, we want to give them an Indian name, our clan name. I belong to the Buffalo clan, and my name is uh, Bagij, and each one of my brothers and sisters have an Indian name. And uh, during the summertime or when, when a child is first born, it's appropriate time to give them an Indian name. Sometimes people wait till later and, and give Indian names to their children. But during our celebrations that we have every year, at, uh, it's, it's our harvest celebration at Macy, and it always happens in the middle of August with the full moon. 
whether whatever whatever time the full moon comes out, we have our cel harvest celebration. And at that time, we have at our camps, we we have uh, ceremonies that we can do. To we can give Indian names. We can uh, we can put feathers and plumes on our on our children to dance in the arena. And it's all about prayer and food and reunion, bringing our families together to talk to one another and to help one, one another that way. And the food is the sacrifice that we make. It's very, very uh, important to us. And so a lot of our songs that we sing in our native language are prayer songs. And so those are the kinds of things that we try to help each other with. And, that, and our celebration time is a time of education for us. And so that's very important. Now at my home in, in Rosalie, I have, a, <clears throat> I have a, a prayer lodge, I like to call it. And a lot of people commonly call these sweat lodges. But at my home, uh, we can put 15 people in a circle and, uh, and bring in hot rocks. Uh, and we can uh, we put water on them and it makes a hot steam, but uh, it's a prayer circle and, and when we do the ceremony, it's very it's very spiritual and uh, We make prayers and in these prayer services are mainly to help other people Maybe uh, we have someone who's sick in a hospital who need, who's badly in need of prayers and the only thing that we can offer them is our prayers uh, we have children who are in need of need of help. Uh, we have mourners, people who are in mourning. They might have lost a loved one, and their heart is broken. We try to help one another through these through these ceremonies. And at my home in Rosalie, I've uh, I've had uh, the honor to have uh, uh, the Archbishop of Omaha, uh, Father Lucas, come to our Archbishop Lucas come to my home and participated in the sweat lodge with us and prayed with us. And Father Dave Korth and Father Mark Barron, you know, they've, they've come there and, and they continue to come there. And, we, and I try to bring this uh, prayer service to my home uh, as often, at least once a week to come there and pray. But uh, years ago, uh, I, I came home to my reservation after I had worked for the government. And I uh, looked around at our people, and I found that these 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 prayer lodges is that were, me? well, that's me. I'm sorry. Prayer lodges were all over our reservation. And and uh, I went to a Catholic church to pray, and when I was there, I didn't see very many of my relatives there. But as I looked around the reservation, I saw all these, uh, these uh, prayer lodges, sweat lodges, and all these families coming together to pray. And they, they, would, uh, they would break bread together afterwards. It would socialize. And, they, and that was where they were getting their spiritual strength. And so I, I built one in my, my, and put it in my backyard in, in Rosalie, Nebraska, and uh, opened the door to anyone of any color to come there and pray. As long as their mind and their heart was in the right place, they were welcome to come in. Mm. And we, uh, we only talk to God there. You know, that's, other lodges can do lots of different, different things. But we, uh, we talk to God and uh, get that spiritual strength. And so today, it's, it's really a good, uh, it's, it's good to have a place to prayer. And, I, and lots of people have them in their own homes. Might have a special room where you can go and pray or mm. the basement or somewhere. But here at my home, I have a, prayer lodge. So that's what, that's what uh, we do to help one another. Yes. Well, it's yeah. a pleasure for me to come and say something good about St. Augustine's and look at the future and, and, and sometimes to look at the past and, and uh, remember these fond memories. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's good and I, I, uh, I'm, I'm real glad to be here today. Well, you're a good man. I'm yeah, thank you very much for having me. Doing good things. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to take a picture of him still. No, no, I'm just going to take a, a photograph. Yeah. Here. Well, I know you're not going to use the whole thing, no, but just, but, to, uh, just cut it. Actually, can I yeah. can I get a copy of whatever you guys do? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, some of it will 
Because I, I, I could probably show that to my kids and grandkids. Oh, yeah. and oh absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be different different variations. Different people. Different people in there and different things. Yeah, yeah. but... Uh, Would you like a copy of just the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, there'll be a... I've got your phone number and I've got mm -hmm. your address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a lot of lots of memories about St. Augustine's. Yeah, no. Father Frank brought about one year. He he bought about uh, about forty sleds. Oh. oh, wow. Yeah, and they kept them underneath yeah. the church. In the, in a, nice hills around. Yeah, and they had these hills, and uh, I I think he knew that somebody was going to get hurt a little bit, but he still brought these sleds, and we zoomed down the hills, and we had so much fun, you know. And uh, he 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 sure he sure liked that. Father. I've never, never once ever remember going to, I, me, I, I went to the, the, uh, the Sister Ignatius office a few times because to be disciplined, you know. Oh, yeah. But I've never ever gone to have, uh, to Father Frank's office to, to have him scold me or anything. Okay. You know, I, I think about it and I wonder, he just left that to the nuns, you know. Yeah. You know, he, he was smart to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he probably heard about what we did because they had to report to him, I suppose, and tell him that we were naughty. But uh, he never was, and then he never acted like he knew either. Mm. So that was kind of like a, it was a blessing. yeah. He gave, well, he kept his himself very uh, safe, uh, safe. Mm -hmm. So all the kids, nobody would dislike him, mm. you know. And uh, mm. when I, I was like six years old, and uh, the, the old, it was an old church up here. I don't know if you guys got pictures of that or not. Mm. The original church. Mm. It's up here by the. There yeah. might be more over at the. Uh, we haven't it's gone a, to school to get there. Yeah. Across from uh, one of Mark's house, there was a big uh, old building there. Part of that was a school and dormitory there. I mean, a uh, dining hall there. And then the church was right where Father Mark's house is. Oh, okay. Big, big, big Catholic church. And uh, and we had a Quonset right where we're sitting right now, I think, close to it here. Mm -hmm. There was a Quonset building. And upstairs was the dormitory. And I think probably 60... 70 kids who had beds all over up there, you know, and uh, but every day after school The nuns at the at the kitchen where we had the where we had the dining room We had to eat in groups, you know uh, Every day after school I, I recall that uh, uh, The nuns were had baked bread And they would we'd all go up there and line up and then uh, they would butter this bread for us, you know these buns and so everybody would get one, you know, and that was a big deal for us, you know, because everybody looked forward to that. So the, the nuns were really, were really, uh, my, my fondest memories of the nuns, you know. So I don't know what anybody else says about them, but that's what I can say, yeah. you know. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. You just heard a lot of good stories. About the nuns, yeah, they, they, were, they, were, they were fantastic. Sister Margaret, Sister Mary Joseph, Sister Ignatius, Sister Mary... Sister Mary was a disciplinarian. She was tough, but she had to be, I think. You know, Sister Dominica. I can still remember the names of these. You know, and then the priests were. We used to have a a, a, a thing that happened in this during Lent. And uh, I don't know if they probably don't do it anymore, but they they would go to the church and we would take turns. Where they I don't know what you call it. We had to keep vigil mm -hmm. inside the church all night. Mm -hmm. So I remember getting wake, waking me up about two o'clock in the morning, and I had to go take my half-hour shift or whatever it was, you know, go into the church and kneel down. <coughs> but those were those were some good memories, mm -hmm. good education, yeah. and you know, I graduated from the FBI Academy too. Mm -hmm. So I would my my intent was to become an FBI agent. Mm. And uh, because I, that's what I, that's the kind of work I did. I did murder investigations. I did all kinds of serious mm. criminal investigations on reservations. Mm. And uh, when I was in the Dakotas and working around there, that, uh, that's all I did. And then I became an administrator. But uh, and I, I got to travel all these reservations. And I think I'm really lucky that I, that I was able to do that. You know, because I went to Oklahoma. I mean, who else gets the government to pay for all these mm -hmm. You know, places where I worked, you know, and got to meet different Indians. I got to see different uh, uh, 
people, some of them not as fortunate as us. Mm -hmm. Very poor people up in the Dakotas, in the Pine Ridge and Rosebud, mm -hmm. and down into Pima. Very, very, very poor people. And I got to, I got to see that and uh, realize how important my my life, mm -hmm. how easy my, my <laughs> things were for me here, you know. Because a lot of those kids probably have a difficult time with education because they don't have enough food and they don't have proper clothing and things like that, you know. But uh, we were always well dressed here when I was a boy. And I, I, you know, I, now that I think about it, I don't remember picking out my clothes. I think the nuns did that for us, you know. But we're well, well dressed. Everybody had their Sunday best too, you know, your special clothes you wear on Sunday. And I don't know how they ever kept track of all that, you know, but they did. Yeah. When you traveled around in your adult life, did your family go with you, or did they stay here? No, my my, my family mm -hmm. moved with me, and you so know, because I would stay, I would too. stay at, I stayed at Pine Ridge for six years, and and we said we were in Oklahoma for two years. We were in Fort Duchesne, Utah, Fort Washakie, and uh, I actually lived there. I have a, a son who's forty two years old. He's disabled, and he lives in a group home in Omaha. He's the only one of my children who is kind of sickly, you know, but he's all right, though. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. you meet my son, you'd like him. He's really, really happy all the time. That's one blessing that God gave him. He's happy all the time. Mm -hmm. As long as he's got McDonald's mm -hmm. <laughs> and Mountain Dew. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, I'm glad you guys are doing this. You know, I hope, I hope it helps the St. Augustine's, you know. Yeah. Your family will no, enjoy this, too. I think you're... Uh, your well-traveled uh, experiences, uh, maybe perspective, you know, it's all, everybody, it's about perspective and how you, how you view things and, and people can have the uh, same experience and have different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And uh, I appreciate the, yeah. the very, very positive perspective yeah. that you yeah. bring. Yeah. And that's, that's I don't know which, which nun it was, but I, I remember one of the nuns Saying and uh, you know, saying, you, you, Nate, you must always treat people the way you like to be treated. Mm. And I'm sure she just didn't say that to me, but that really stuck in my mind. You know, throughout my adult life and everything, I would think, I'm gonna treat them the way I like to be treated. You know, treat them with respect. You know, mm. but on the other hand, if they treat you badly, you know, you, you people tend to do that, do the opposite, and treat them badly too. You know, and mm. I was always able to refrain myself from that kind of thing. You know. Mm. So, the good teachings that we had here at St. Augustine's, mm -hmm. important. Yeah. Oh, that's... Small things, you know, be honest, you know. Like, don't steal, don't cheat, don't lie. Here's the Ten Commandments, Nate, read them. <laughs> you know, what's the Fourth Commandment, you know? <laughs> Stuff like that. Mm. You know, how, how, many, how many kids get to do that? If, my, if I was home and raised by my mother, she probably wouldn't have, you know, taught me about the Ten Commandments. Maybe she would have. Maybe she would have read it to me maybe once or twice, but we studied it in catechism. And that was something else I didn't mention. We had a catechism class almost every day at the, in, in school, learning about the Bible, learning about what Christmas was all about, what Easter was all about, resurrection, crucifixion, and you know, all these kind of things that I didn't get to mention in the, in the, in the interview, but all those things combined go together in building character. You know, I believe it's really important. Lent, for example, going without uh, without eating meat for let me try that. It's really difficult, you know, mm. and uh, giving up certain good things that you you like. You know, those were the things that we did. You know, Saint Augustine's. And most of us cheated. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's human nature. Yeah, that's human nature. Don't we got you? Okay, yeah. you good. Yeah.